We made tap handles for Budweiser, Goose Island, Miller Lite. You know, I think this is a first with an actual snow globe on a tap handle. Yeehaw Pale Ale. I like this one because it's just a big, awesome looking tap handle. Stiegel, Prescott, and Central Waters, to name a few. I'm Mark Steinhardt, General Manager of AJS Tap Handles. I definitely would try that beer. So a guy walks into a bar, and the first thing he does, if it's me, I look, what's on tap? Certainly, the unique tap handles pique your interest and might push you to try that beer. I like this tap handle because I'm a road biker. We're located in Random Lake, Wisconsin, which is about 45 minutes north of Milwaukee. Even though Wisconsin is a rural state, we produce tap handles for the mega breweries on down to the smallest microbrew. We believe we're the largest domestic producer of tap handles here in the U.S. We ship out approximately a half a million tap handles each year. We can produce the tap handle from start to finish. This is a very detailed tap handle and I would guess takes about an hour to hand paint all the detail on it. Companies do try to have the most eye-catching, most unique tap handle in the bar. And it is a cross between art and manufacturing. We always say our tap handle will sell your first beer and your beer will sell the rest. In the cold white north of Minnesota, there's a place that will get you warm after a long day on the ice. You can do some fishing or have a tasty beverage. And it's something of a dream for Josie. I've always wanted to own a neighborhood bar and we finally do. Mine's just sitting on a frozen lake. Ice fishing is a way of life around here for people. It gets so cold, below zero temps quite often, which allows us to drive and put houses out and drill holes in the lake and fish. When it gets cold enough in the early winter, Josie's husband goes out and tests the ice to make sure it's thick enough. If it is, they can put the bar together and then the ice hole can open. The ice here is so thick that this bar sits on top of it. To come to our bar on the lake, you just drive your car out on the ice and park. We don't have a parking lot, you just park wherever you want, walk in and have a beer. People like to fish and drink beer and from our bar here, you can do that all at the same time. The local favorite drink here is called the minnow shot. People will actually take a live minnow, which is fishing bait, and put it into their shot and drink it. Oh boy. Oh yeah! Oh she wiggled a little bit. Yeah. As delicious as that seafood beverage sounds, people come just because the fact that the bar exists is pretty amazing. People's reactions to this bar are from crazy to they don't understand it to that's the coolest thing ever. They come from all over the world to see it. It's very seasonal. We're only open 20 days. If you're ever near Lake Lida, drive out on the ice, park, come into the bar and grab a pole. Pubs. There's thousands of them, but this story is about just four. And what makes them so special? They're old. This guy thinks his pub is oldest. I'm a fair bit older, all right. <laughs> no. no way. I guess we should look into this. In that case, welcome to the search for the oldest pub in the world. Take the floor, Landlord One. Welcome to the old trip to Lucent, the oldest pub in England. So the landlord boards go back to 1760, but we know the caves go back to 1070 when the first castle was built. Up here. Here is the wooden galleon. Don't touch it though. Everyone who's cleaned it has come to a mysterious end. Who knows if we're the oldest pub in the world, but we sure serve the best pint in the world. Landlord 2, you're up. 
Welcome to the old ferry boat, the oldest pub in England, and possibly the world. Isn't that what the last guy said? No, 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 it is. Right. This pub has been dated back to 1050 AD, but legend has it it's 500 years older. So it's pretty old, pretty damn old. We don't have any silly ships here, but we do have a ghost. This pub was built on the grave of a young girl called Juliet. But one thing's for sure, we do serve the best pint. Let's hear it, Landlord 3. Welcome to Old Man and Scythe. It's so old, we don't even know exactly how old it is. The records go back to 1251, but the design of our cellar is before the turn of the century. So you don't know? It's definitely older than the others though. Right. One ghost, we've got way more than that. We've got 53. And one in particular is way better than theirs. In 1651, James Stanley, the seventh Earl of Derby, was executed right here during the English Civil War. Head. <laughs> Oldest pub in the world? We think so. But one thing's for sure, we pull the best pint in the world. Wait, I haven't introduced- I'll stop you there. There are many who claim to be the oldest, but we are fully researched and dated as the oldest. Come on in. You're very welcome to Sean's. The bar itself is actually older than the town itself. Almost all the owners are on record, even back to the original owner, Lewin himself in 900. And he guided people across the old ford. Just here, over here in the walls, is our letter and cert from the Guinness Book of World Records. <gasps> have we found it? You have found it, and you're very welcome to Sean's. Every bar is going to claim to have the best beer in the world, but we can certainly claim we have the best whiskey in the world. This has got to be the best excuse for a pub crawl ever. <laughs> Cheers. The Bunny Man is a tradition that's been going on for centuries in South Queen's Ferry. A few hundred years ago, it was a very pagan community. This guy would get dressed up once a year to try and take away all their bad luck, to give them, maybe hopefully give them a good harvest. So you touch up for good luck, or you can even take one of these wee birds, and that'll give you good luck. I'm Andrew Taylor, and I'm the Bunny Man of South Queen's Ferry. So we collect, I would say, well over a thousand birds we take them back, we dry them off. Yeah, well, I put a balaclava over my face and they actually sew the balaclava to a T-shirt. And then my T-shirt to my trousers is also sewed. And then they just stick the birds on me, pretty much one by one. From head to toe. They cut you, they, they really do, they, they scrape you. You don't really feel comfortable. You sit down, you're uncomfortable. You walk in, you're uncomfortable. You're sort of you're never really that comfortable. But that's when my two helpers, Duncan and Andrew, come in. They hold the poles and they take me down to South Queen's Fair, but they also just make sure I'm okay because I can't see down as I can only see straight ahead. I walk around the whole of South Queen's Ferry. Well, as much of it as I can. Everybody's trying Into the streets. And a lot of people will then come out with drams of whiskey. And Andrew, what are you saying? Oh, I'm doing great. Which I'll take a sip of, or have a lot of whiskey stops. All the way down South Queen's Ferry. And then I hit the high street, going to all the pubs, restaurants, for a wee sip of whiskey. I must walk about eight to 10 mile overall, I would say. Queen's Ferry, the special locals, they get very excited on the day of Bunny Man. You know when it's Bunny Man's Day. They all really enjoy it, they all come out, they're very proud of this fantastic tradition. Not many people can say they've been the Bunny Man. There's only a few that I, I know of that have been the Bunny Man in South Queen's Ferry, so it's quite nice to be a part of that sort of group. I've been the Bunny Man now for five years. It's a very big honour. Being from South Queen's Ferry all my life, I mean, I've seen the Bunny Man since I was seven, eight year old. I mean, I do pass it on, just hopefully the person who takes over just carries on this fantastic tradition. That's all you hope for, because it is such a unique tradition that you, you would never want it to disappear. And I don't, I don't think it ever will. I think there'll always be a Bunny Man. I really think there will be.
Our founding fathers were booze hounds. So much so that Benjamin Franklin published a dictionary of 228 words that all describe one thing, being blind drunk in the 13 colonies. We love to drink. Colonial Americans were perpetually bombed, especially since water wasn't always clean and accessible. Oh, gross. Many of our nation's most respected men could be found with a glass or two in hand. In fact, Thomas Jefferson drafted the Declaration of Independence uh, yes. while drunk on Madeira. George Washington racked up an epic bar tab of over 160 bottles for just 54 delegates. It's on me. And John Adams drinking. went on a seven-week binge, drinking. drinking six hours a night with younger congressmen. Drinking. Keep drinking. So Franklin took a stab at his peers and published the terms he overheard at local pubs in the Drinker's Dictionary. Here's what they said. I've got corns in my head. Oh, go eat a pudding bag, Thomas. You're one to talk, Washington. You're as dizzy as a goose. I'm jambled. My goodness, Hamilton, you've got a brass eye today. Well, the king was his cousin. Clearly, gentlemen, you're all wasted. 